welcome everyone this is shashank tyagi from edukemi i hope this message finds you fit and fine and you taking care of yourself and your family that is most important so in today's video i am going to discuss answer writing in psir optional this is going to be our lecture flow first we are going to talk about understanding time words and marks ratio in real time exam scenario some things which should which you should have in mind whenever you start practice then we are going to talk about structure how to categorize your answer in introduction body and conclusion then i am going to take one question and moral answer from this topic political theory meaning and approaches okay even after completing you know knowing the structure starting practice many students struggle in using right kind of psr vocabulary in their answer and you can always add value in your answer if you use some standard template of certain scholars okay as all of you know since you have joined psr optional you have chosen for psr optional that psr optional as a discipline is different from other disciplines like you know science or analytical based disciplines we have to weave our answer through certain standard views of scholars right to solve this problem or to give you added advantage i've started psir scoop so in this description box there's a telegram link just tap over it and you will find one page crisp content on specific terminologies in which many students struggle in which i feel that you should have a required depth of understanding okay so why i am saying it is a scoop because it is a crisp one page document a quick read okay so get the scoop just after this video ends before it melts okay like a scoop of ice cream right now in real time exam scenario you are having 3 hours and you have the total weightage is 250 marks right so how many words you need to write this is 3750 3750 to 4500 okay and upsc demand both quantity and quality okay so make it a practice that whenever you are writing an answer so every 15 word 18 word you are writing it should be clear in your mind that it is worth one mark so that many of the students have this habit na ki they write in the way they used to write in their post grad or school okay in introduction they use too many words too many sentences which are not required you need to be direct you need to hit the demand which is asked in question right the core which is asked so when it comes to structure we need to know what is introduction so in introduction you should click the actual topic issue or idea okay so as evaluator is looking it should be clear that you have understood the actual issue or idea okay and you should briefly narrate what is the central premise of your answer please give due attention to this point it means what is the key issue key idea and what you are going to write in the body part right it should be reflected in one line in your introduction itself this makes you know your introduction more legitimate when it comes to number of words you can use the standard is that 10% of the total word limit if the word limit is 150 words it means 15 words should be used in your introduction however you can increase it to 20% it is based on the demand of your answer okay uh, because many times what happen in a particular question there are two sub parts okay so in introduction you need to mention about both the points you know give a basic idea that you have understood the link you have understood the context why this particular question has been asked so i'm going to display each of this advice with actual answer okay 
second is divide the main body into certain para and bullets and you should be clear that each para or bullet whichever way you are using it should have one core argument okay it should not be like that in one para you are using two three arguments in another para then you are using two arguments okay because it is part of your structuring and presentation now how to conclude so in conclusion whatever the main dimensions main points you have raised it should look like that in conclusion you have just made a gist out of it means what is the outcome that is what you have displayed here okay i'm going to explain it with a real answer so you can begin with a simple sentence and bring together all elements points arguments in one answer okay in that particular line now let's hit a particular question question is discuss the nature of crisis in evolution of political theory now first look on the directive of question directive word is discuss it's not comment it's not evaluation it's not critically evaluate it is discuss means it is demanding that you should know the core points of the answer and you should expand over them okay now what is the topic so topic is political theory okay and what is the subtopic what is the demand so it is asking that you should discuss the nature of crisis in evolution of political theory in many books and in many make in many notes which are circulated in the market what happened that in this paper one section a topic one political theory the notes are structured in a manner that they talk about evolution of political theory they talk about approaches in political theory so as student read this word evolution and they start with the evolution how political theory evolved from one to next they talk about normative theory they talk about behavioral they talk about post behavior that's how they structure the answer but i would say that that structure is not expected because focus is not evolution focus is nature of crisis question is saying discuss the nature of crisis so how we are going to introduce first what is the core topic political theory then give two or two and half lines in which you are just explaining what is political theory first is explaining what is political theory second which you should do in your introduction i have told you that what is the demand demand is nature of crisis so you should expand what are the crisis what were the crisis amidst which this political theory has evolved kaun se crisis the jinme political theory evolved so there are two crises right one which happened after world war 2 and other crises which happened in 1960s so you should mention these crises with an introduction i am not explaining nature of crisis nature we are going to expand in body part but you have mentioned the crisis okay so that if evaluator is clear okay this student is not expanding on evolution this is this student is expanding on nature of crisis okay so then in body part we are going to expand how we are going to do for example if we are talking about intro so in intro you have talked about political theory then you have talked about one and two what are the crises then in body part what what i am going to do i am going to talk about first crisis i am going to expand over that and then i am going to mention some scholars i am going to mention at least two scholars what they said on this particular crisis then i am going to expand on second crisis what is that crisis okay what is the nature of that crisis then i am going to supplement the that crisis with some views okay there also i'm going to expand with two or more scholars right after that what i'm going to do i'm going to give some lines for what happened as an outcome of these crises because the word is evolution so after these two crises political theory is evolved so what is the evolution what is the outcome so i'm going to expand that and then i'm going to conclude and my conclusion would be 
having elements of what I mentioned in body part. So let's have a look. For example, introduction. First, I've explained what is political theory. Okay, all of you know from the previous video, I've explained what is political theory. Political theory simply explains, evaluate or contemplate what is the political reality. Means the political reality or phenomena which is going on, it evaluate, explain, contemplate. Okay, this is happening. Okay, this is happening because of this structure. These are some realities. This is how politics is working. Okay, so it gives explanation. Now, when I am explaining this part, I am saying it is explaining a political reality. But when we talk about the evolution of political theory, we find that in initial stages of political theory, it evolved from political philosophy. It means in starting, it was loaded with moral values. It was loaded with normative way of thinking. When I say normative, it means whenever I use the word normative evolution of political theory, it means at this point, the political theories which were evolving, which were given by various scholars, they were discussing how should our political structure should be means how should be how things ought to work okay so this is what when we say normative so in introduction we have explained what is political theory then what we are going to do then within introduction we should hit two points means what was the first crisis so after world war ending the monopoly of traditional normative thinking i told you in initial years it was normative thinking Okay, in introduction, we are not explaining why that monopoly ended. What were the reasons? No, we just have to mention what was the crisis. Ending of monopoly of traditional normative thinking. And when I say traditional normative thinking, it means political theory loaded with moral values. Asa hona chahi. Asa hona chahi. This is how our politics should work. This is how our society should work. This is how interaction between society and political institutions should work. Should, should. Asa hona chahi. So this was normative thinking, but it was said that this normative thinking is away from ground realities. We are talking about aisa hona chahiye, but kaisa hai? Aisa to nahi hai ki we are not talking about realities. We are lacking the sense of reality because how we are going to get sense of reality when we conduct certain observation, verification, experimentation. So there come after World War II, there was a change, there was a shift in political theory and we found behavioralist movement. And the hotspot of behavioralist movement in political science was USA. But we are not talking about that. I'm just expanding on these lines so that many of the people who are just watching this video and they have not gone through the previous video, also they have not read the chapter, they should also get some sense of what is being discussed in this particular answer. Okay. Now, second. Second was in 1960s, when obsession with these techniques, the techniques which has observation, verification. So these were some techniques. So in 1960s, it was found that we are using too much techniques because it was said that now we are having scientific way of political theory. When I say scientific way of theory, it means we were conducting some experiments and experiments where? Experiments where? Experiments on behavior or interaction of people, of these institutions, they're working. For example, before this world wars, what was happening? Political theory loaded with rights, justice, and these concepts were based on ki kya hona chahi. But later, this in this behavioralist movement, it was said that when we talk about politics, can there be politics without interaction of people? No. Politics is based on interaction of people. Right? And can we say that this interaction is, you know, fixed everywhere around the world? No, there are changes, right? When societies change, the way of interaction change. But according to behaviorist movement, we still in a particular area can find a common ground. What, is, what are the aspirations? What are the reasons? 
how people interact what are the demands of the people right what are the values of people so in this behaviorist movement we use this experimentation we conducted surveys we verified surveys then we deduced what we got from surveys so we were using too many techniques and this was called scientific way okay so these techniques were used in so much man you know they were used so extensively that it was said that it compromised the subject matter because when it comes to politics politics is not political theory is not just about conducting surveys it is also about what is the broad idea what is the broad objective of our political structure so political theory needs to talk about that also so these crises we found after this 1960 it means you can say 1960s so i have explained you but you have to give it a hint just mention what were the crises now in body part now in body part you explain right you are first you are going to mention first crisis first crisis was characterized by dissatisfaction with traditional normative thinking this was the first crisis i just told you we are talking about normative sense not about ground realities kya hona chahiye lekin kya hai do experiment on this so there was this crisis which accused of being diverse from reality that is this is what i have explained you so in political science you should remember you build your understanding on the basis of contribution of certain scholars and that is that is what you should need to mention in your answer okay so here according to eastern the influence of moral theory was so pervasive so powerful that political theory in the past could not get any scope to establish own identity this was the view of david eastern means we were so much engrossed in moral theory that we were not able to establish political science as a separate discipline which talks about ground ground realities so you should supplement your basis of the crisis with certain scholars similarly you should quote dante germino what he said so he said one of the major cause of decline of political theory is emergence colorful emergence of ideology and ideological reductionism now i use the word colorful emergence of ideology there may be some people who are starting for the first time and they don't know but i'm talking about how you structure your answer how you place your answer okay so when i say colorful emergence of ideology in my previous video i created difference i created difference between ideology and theory ideology are set of ideas with particular objective which is ideology shapes the consciousness of society right each one of us believe in certain ideology whether you know it or not but we adhere to particular ideology if we if we think that private profit is the base private profit is necessary it means we are believing in capitalism and why we are believing in capitalism because we are born and we are living in this age right now how it is connected to him, this particular point when i say colorful emergence of ideology it means ideologies having particular set particular set of id objective and these particular ideologies with particular set of objectives for serving interest of particular section the most important point is serving the interest of particular section they became so prominent that political theory itself lost its shine lost its shine and similarly ideological reductionism for example marxism when i say marxism whenever we are using ism it's an ideology marxism it's an ideology when i say ideological reduction is it's it means we are understanding a complex phenomena just by looking at some elements in this particular ideology and making sense of reality or political reality from these elements for example according to marx what is reality according to marx when it comes to political reality according to marx what is happening this is state and government is one element of state they work 
for serving the need of capitalist class. They are primarily exploiters of working class. So ideological reduction is what is what ideological reductionism is doing. Many political theories, which call themselves theories, but although what they are doing, they are just looking at certain elements. Okay, Marxism में ये कहा गया, ऐसे ऐसे होता है, चलो इसी से अपनी theory को हम place करते हैं. Don't you think this would be decline of political theory? Yes, it would be decline of political theory because when I say political theory, it should be unbiased. It should be objective. But whenever I use the word ideology, it is already having certain objective. It is already, it has already declared that this is the way things should be. This is the way things work. And they are serving for the interest of particular section. When I'm using the word colorful, colorful emergence of ideology. So political theory should be unbiased, should be based on some observation, should be based on certain experiments, but using just normativeness, it has reduced its shine. So to know more, because I'm not talking about ideological reductionism in this lecture. That is why I have used this PSR optional scoop, one page document, quickly just go through it. It is mentioned in Telegram. It is given in Telegram. Okay. So this is today's scoop. Okay. Now let me get back to the model answer. As, as you are done with Dante Germino, then mention second crisis. And what was second crisis? Its second crisis came in behavioralism itself because we were using so many techniques experimentation you know verification surveys that we lost or we compromised the subject matter of political science okay so in that part we should use Rawls because Rawls theory just has highlighted that this empirical approach means conducting some survey, this empirical approach can neither explain all the aspects of political theory, nor produce a viable theory of politics. Because if you just, if you are just conducting surveys, you are just, you are just saying, okay, I have got, I have surveyed, you know, th these many people, I have surveyed these many political institutions, how they work, what's their power, and that's how I'm building my theory. Then Rawls said, no experiment, no survey can explain the all possibilities in that structure. Because every person may give opinion, may be part of that survey from their own set of views. And there can be multiple views. And as things change, behavior also change. So behavior is not fixed. You cannot say that since we are conducting surveys, now we are just like any other scientific discipline. No. In physics, if this is falling down, so this is falling down here also, this is falling down after, you know, tomorrow also, so this is quite clear. But when it comes to political science and you, you are using behavioralism, it may be possible that I'm conducting survey, I'm asking you certain questions. Are you confirmed that whatever are your opinions today, these opinions will not be ch ch changing? No, these opinions can change tomorrow. As John Locke once said, our mind is tabula rasa. It is a clean slate. So what happened on this clean slate? So it's, it starts as a clean slate, but through our experiences, our opinions develop and we keep on changing, right? So this was the basis that Rawls said, no, this is not viable for theory of politics. And then, then Leo Strauss, he said, upheld the morality. We cannot ignore it because behavioralism was focusing too much on techniques, techniques, techniques. They have lost the value of morality, which we used to use in normative, you know, uh, period of political theories evolution. So Leo Strauss said, morality the honey 
you are just conducting surveys and you are not talk, you are not giving a way how things should be and what kind of political theory you are building david easton said that trade off relevance should be there means every discipline for example we are talking about political discipline it should serve a particular purpose for example if we are facing some kind of dissatisfaction at a larger scale in our society and we are thinking that if this kind of uh, you know dissatisfaction continue then this can threaten the stability then what we can do we can do this thing that we should build new ways of interacting new way when i say interacting i'm talking about political institutions i'm talking about our beliefs toward our rights our beliefs toward the power of these institutions so these should change the credo of relevance should be there and we can also take example of what happened in 1960s in 1960 you find that in us there was civil rights movement right and do, don't you think when this civil rights movements are happening what were they demanding they were saying that system of politics in usa must change if the political if the politics of that time was not giving equal rights to the other race that is wrong you have to give equal rights to the race if you are using the word that equality is there your equality is not complete until and unless you change this particular dynamics means your political theory should not just talk about okay this is how usa's politics work no it should have an element of morality it should have some norms when i say norms you should resurrect norms means how things should be then that is how we change right so this is what happened after second crisis so now can we you know bring a gist of this that after these two crises political theory changed for example earlier it was normative after world war 2 it changed to behavioralism because normative was talking about what ought to be not ground reality then we found ground reality and we were conducting surveys verification and we were too much engrossed in ground realities but that we lost focus on the morality the element of morality right now the suggestion was to prioritize the responsibility of social scientists rather than having obsession with methods so this is what we gain after crisis of 1960s ab jab ye bhi hamara failure hone laga behaviorism ne tab laga ki ab we have to find a middle path and middle path was now it's the time to revive the subject means we were using too many approaches too many approaches which are scientific in nature let's bring the core area the core objective of political science back so that's how post behaviorism was emerged so you can say that post behaviorism was a composite was a composite of these two crises how which had goals of relevance means relevance rehni chahiye aisa nahi hona chahiye jaise normative mein ho raha tha ground pe baat hi nahi ho rahi right but there should action there should be some action means you should conduct certain surveys you should bring certain policies which are bringing some changes this approach pursued desirable social change change should come so you should you should remember that social change by the civil right movement because in 1960s the civil rights movement were going on in usa and that's how things changed and it was said that in now in political theory we should pursue a desirable social change through action packaging values with facts means value should be there like equality is a value every race is equal white or black every race is equal that's a value we should bring facts in place we said we are equal but what is the reality look on the education look on the representation in politics that's how we get to the facts now we got the value of equality between races now we look into the facts okay number of people representing okay there's no representation of black look into the civil rights oh there is a huge disparity blacks are not allowed in these neighborhoods blacks are not allowed in these colleges blacks blacks are not allowed to do do this business these are facts so now we add values plus facts and utilize political knowledge for social welfare so this is how you build a link you know a 
storyline means that's a chronology how this political theory has evolved now conclusion simply you can say the crisis and political theory were integral part of its evolution that is what i have discussed agar crisis na hote to kaise hum values actions ko merge karte humne dono tarikon ka istemal kara and then we found no individually every you know every way has a fault and that's how we evolved they contributed to making political analysis more comprehensive effective and relevant this is how you conclude okay so i hope you got some idea of what is you know what is the way to mold your answer okay then from this reference question and answer you got some idea how you should place your views and what are the important things which you should keep in mind right in my next video i'm going to cover next part of this political theory and theory of state series for example in theory of state in last video i was discussing origin of origin of state and within origin of state i discussed social contract now i'm going to discuss evolution of theory of state and marxist theory of state so tune in for that and see you next time till then keep learning keep growing shashank tyagi signing off